These are the headlines that we're following at this hour. North Korea fired what's presumed to be an intermediate range ballistic missile into the East Sea this morning. President Yoon Song Yar referred to this as the regime's attempt to shake South Korea ahead of the general election and added that it'll only make the country more united. South Korea's inflation continued to ride high in March, hovering above 3 percent, driven by soaring fresh fruit prices. Amid the prolonged walkout by doctors, the government is extending its emergency medical system for another month. President Yoon announces his will to talk to the protesting doctors himself. Good evening. It's 9 p.m. here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us on Arirang News. We start with North Korea's third ballistic missile launch of the year. This morning, Pyongyang fired what it appears to be a hypersonic intermediate-range ballistic missile into the sea off its east coast. President Yoon says this latest launch is aimed at shaking South Korea ahead of the general election, adding that it'll only bring the country closer together. Our defense correspondent Choi min Jung leads us off. North Korea launched an apparent intermediate-range ballistic missile into the East Sea on Tuesday morning. Seoul's Joint Chiefs of Staff detected the missile at around 6.53 a.m., launched toward the East Sea from the Pyongyang area. It traveled around 600 kilometers, shorter than average for an IRBM, which normally flies between 3 to 5,000 kilometers. However, a military official said due to its high speed, Tuesday's missile is likely a hypersonic intermediate-range class ballistic missile. North Korea previously test-fired a solid-fuel hypersonic IRBM in January. And last month, the regime claimed success in a ground test of a solid-fuel engine for a new medium-to-long-range hypersonic missile. Military officials said Tuesday's launch appears to be an upgrade from January's test firing as they spotted enhanced missile capabilities with the newly tested solid fuel engine. The latest launch is believed to be related to the solid fuel engine ground test that North Korea publicly revealed in March. Hypersonic missiles are designed to travel at more than five times the speed of sound and often maneuver at relatively low altitudes, making them harder to detect and intercept. IRBMs are weapon systems capable of targeting U.S. military bases in Guam or Japan. Referring to the launch at a cabinet meeting on Tuesday, President Yoon song yeol said North Korea's attempts to divide the nation and interfere with the upcoming general election set for next week will only make South Korea unite more tightly. North Korea has previously staged provocations before general elections in South Korea. South Korea's military said it is closely cooperating with the U.S. and Japan to maintain a full readiness stance. The nuclear envoys of Seoul, Washington and Tokyo also condemned North Korea for its recent missile test and agreed to continue close cooperation to curb Pyongyang's threats ahead of the upcoming election. Choi min Dong, Arirang News. Following the North's missile launch, South Korea, the U.S. and Japan conducted a trilateral air drill involving the United States' B-52 strategic bomber. Seoul's Defense Ministry on Tuesday said this year's first trilateral air drill took place over water southeast of Jeju Island. The training was designed to improve deterrence and response capabilities against North Korea's evolving nuclear and missile threats. Seoul's F-15K fighters and Tokyo's F-2s also participated in the training. The three countries vowed to expand trilateral drills to strengthen cooperation against threats from the north. In the meantime, South Korea has imposed another round of sanctions against the north, targeting Russian vessels that are allegedly involved in the illicit weapons transfers to North Korea. Also targeted were two Russians and their companies for, their, for helping the regime send IT workers to Russia. Our foreign affairs correspondent Pei Eunji reports. 
South Korea has newly added two Russian vessels to its sanctions list for their involvement in arms transfers by North Korea. Announcing this on Tuesday, the foreign ministry stressed that the government and the international community have continuously urged North Korea and Russia to halt such military cooperation. The Russian vessels, the Lady R and the Angara, were placed under sanctions for shipping a large number of containers filled with military supplies between Pyongyang and Moscow. South Korea has announced sanctions as military cooperation between Russia and North Korea, including arms transfers, is a clear violation of UN Security Council resolutions. And these actions can be a serious threat to the Korean Peninsula, as well as global peace and security. Tuesday's sanctions also included two Russian companies and the heads of both, accused of helping North Korea earn foreign currency by illegally sending its information technology workers overseas. The Russian firm Intellect LLC was put on the list for providing documents of identification needed for North Korean workers in Russia. The other company, Sojek's VIA, was sanctioned for illegally helping North Korean workers enter Russia and to stay there. Meanwhile, the U.S. also assessed Monday that Pyongyang continues to provide military support to Moscow amid the prolonged war in Ukraine. When asked if North Korea was still supplying Russia with weapons during a press briefing, Pentagon Deputy Spokesperson Sabrina Singh said the partnership between the two sides continues to flourish. She added that while Washington has released declassified information on North Korea-Russia military cooperation before, it will not reveal details of recent shipments. Pins, Arirang News. In other news, South Korea's consumer price index accelerated 3.1 percent on year in March amid soaring costs of fresh fruits. Our Munedong reports. Inflation in South Korea has continued to hover in the 3 percent range for two consecutive months on the back of high prices of fresh fruit. Data from Statistics Korea released on Tuesday shows that the country's consumer price index, a key gauge of inflation, rose 3.1 percent in March compared to the same month the year before. Core inflation, excluding volatile food and energy prices, came to 2.4 percent, while the index measuring 144 daily necessities rose 3.8 percent. This was driven by continued price hikes of fresh produce with poor weather conditions, the rise in prices for fresh fruit in particular increasing by just under 41 percent on year. Apples and pears saw around an 88 percent jump in prices, which is their biggest on-year jump since data was first compiled in 1980. Speaking at a meeting to discuss consumer prices, Finance Minister Choi Sang-mok addressed these concerns. Government is heavily aware of the concerns that people have when doing their grocery shopping and will do its utmost to stabilize inflation to the 2 percent range. Several measures to lower fruit prices have been announced. Starting this month, fruit discounts will be raised from 20 percent to 30, as well as increasing fruit imports. The Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs aims to supply 50,000 tons of 11 different types of imported fruit such as bananas and oranges, by the end of June at a 20 percent discount. And to address the particularly high prices of apples, the government will be expanding contract farming for apples from 49,000 tons last year to 60,000 tons this year, meaning that more apples will be cultivated under government contracts. The Agriculture Ministry has also pledged to set up long-term goals to effectively respond to the root of the problem going forward, climate change, and consider smart farming alternatives to increase yields. Moon Haryan, Arirang News. And against this backdrop, President Yoon Song yeol says emergency funds to stabilize the prices of farm foods will continue indefinitely without limits. This came during a cabinet meeting on Tuesday where he said that 150 billion won, or around 110 million U.S. dollars, has been injected to lower the cost of groceries. He added that he felt heavy-hearted that these measures hadn't lowered prices. Yoon also said the discount support and measures for supplying imported fruits are currently focused on large supermarkets and that they'll include smaller markets and traditional ones going forward. The president also called on measures to use online wholesale markets to efficiently get products from producers to consumers. Meanwhile. South Korea's food exports hit a record high for the first quarter of this year. 
Data from the Agriculture and Food Ministry on Tuesday showed that the value of these exports reached over 2.2 billion U.S. dollars, which is up more than 3 percent compared to the year before. The United States was the largest market, while the European markets saw the largest growth up nearly 28 percent. The ministry attributed the hike to an increase in popularity of Korean contents, such as dramas that feature food items like ramen. The government has decided 240 measures as a result of the 24 policy discussions with citizens this year. That's according to President Yoon song yeol on Tuesday, as he presided over a meeting that assessed the policies regarding social issues that came from the policy discussions with citizens. 23 ministers and top government officials joined the meeting as they discussed several topics, including the status of the after-school program, Nulbom, and the medical reform. President Yoon song yeol emphasized that this new form of discussions made the government act fast and also removed barriers between ministries. He thanked those involved in carrying out the policy discussions, noting that such discussions will continue all year. The government's next follow-up meeting will be on economic issues. Amid prolonged disruptions over medical reform, the government has extended its emergency medical system for one more month, urging doctors once again to engage in dialogue and come up with reasonable proposals. Our Che soo has the latest. The government will extend its emergency medical system for one more month to fill the gap in medical services created by the mass walkout by trainee doctors and by medical professors at general hospitals reducing their working hours. An additional 190 billion Korean, around 107 million U.S. dollars, will be spent on health insurance financing that is supporting the system. The government has also decided to provide an additional 150 percent as funding to hospitals running critical care and emergency room services. It is continuing to urge trainee doctors to end their collective action. On Tuesday, the health ministry called on them to engage in dialogue and suggest reasonable measures for cooperation. If you stop collective actions and propose unified, rational solutions within the medical community based on science and logic, the government is open to discussions. Please deliver your messages with rational measures prioritizing patient safety. However, despite continued urging from the government, the medical community has not responded so far. After President Yoon suk yeols medical reform speech on Monday, the Korean Medical Association stated that doctors' opinions had not been considered at all. The KMA added that doctors will not move unless the government change its current plan to expand medical school admissions by 2000. None of the interns newly accepted this year had registered by Tuesday the deadline for the new employment registration. Medical professors at general hospitals reduced their walking hours for a second day, but a significant reduction in medical services has yet to be seen. While there haven't been any significant changes after outpatient services and surgical procedures were reduced, eyes are now on whether they'll be reduced even further. Che soo Arirang News. And as the medical service disruption continues, President Yoon song yeol says he hopes to meet the trainee doctors that have walked out in protest over the medical school quota hike. South Korea's presidential office said on Tuesday that although there are many medical associations in the country, President Yoon wishes to directly meet with the junior doctors. It added that the presidential office is always open to the Korean citizens. This comes a day after President Yoon said in an address to the Korean public that there is room for talks on the doctors' demands if they come up with a more appropriate and reasonable proposal. Shifting gears, the four-day voting period for the 22nd general election for those aboard ships began today. From Navy personnel to those aboard fishing trawlers, more than 2,000 people are are eligible to vote from ships out at sea. The ballots will reach the National Election Commission by fax. 
Meanwhile, the regular voting period for people overseas has ended in all regions around the world. According to the NEC on Tuesday, nearly 93,000 people, or over 62 percent of all eligible voters, overseas voters, have cast their ballots. This is the highest turnout rate for a general election since voting outside the country was introduced in 2012. The 2024 edition report by the U.S. Trade Representative has criticized South Korean bills that mandate foreign content providers to pay network usage fees. Our Park geun tells us more. The U.S. Trade Representative on its 2024 National Trade Estimate Report on Foreign Trade Barriers, released on Friday, has continued raising issues on pending South Korean bills, calling on foreign online content providers to pay network usage fees. Calling the bills anti-competitive, the report said the National Assembly has been proposing the legislative measures since 2021. The report also said the network usage fees U.S. content providers would have to pay will be profiting the Korean competitors, especially some Korean Internet service providers, including SK Broadband, KT, and LG U+, which are also content providers. The bills would also strengthen their grip on the market. Some U.S. companies oppose the measures, even going for litigation. Twitch, Amazon's streaming platform, suspended its service in Korea at the end of February. In the report, USTR also raised issue with Korea's restrictions on agricultural biotechnology, delaying the approval of new tech products. But the length of this year's report dealing with Korea was two pages shorter than of last year's and 18 percent shorter overall. In the foreword, there was a sentence that didn't appear last year, that each trading partner has a sovereign right to adopt measures in furtherance of legitimate public purposes. U.S. Chamber of Commerce Senior Vice President and Head of International John Murphy said in a statement that there's the risk of giving the green light to other foreign governments to raise barriers against U.S. exports or otherwise discriminate against U.S. companies. Park geun Arirang News. Elsewhere. Iran claims an Israeli attack on its embassy in Syria killed a top commander and has thus reaffirmed affirmed its right to retaliate. Yisinger reports. It what may further escalate the already tense situation in the Middle East. Iran says Israel is responsible for bombing its embassy in Syria. According to local media, the Iranian embassy in Damascus was bombed with Israeli warplanes suspected of being responsible. Tehran claimed that the attack killed seven military advisors, including three senior commanders. However, Israel has not claimed of responsibility for the attack, with an Israeli military spokesman only saying that it does not comment on reports in the foreign media. The Syrian foreign minister and an interior minister were at the scene in the aftermath of the attack both condemning what they called a terrorist attack that killed innocent people. In response to the consulate bombing, Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Nasir Kanani said Tehran preserves the right to respond to the Damascus consulate attack. He added that Iran will decide later how to respond and punish the aggressor. Iran's top diplomat, Hossein Amir Abdelian, earlier pointed to Israel as being the mastermind behind the attack and said the attack violated all international agreements. Since October 7th last year, when armed conflict between Israel and Hamas began, Israel has targeted military installations belonging to Iran and those of its proxies in Syria. Monday's attack would mark the first Israel attack on an embassy compound since the conflict began. Lee Arirang News. In other news, these days, workplaces are undergoing changes, as some call the trend office Big Bang era. Jumping on this trend, Korea's Jeju Island recently introduced a new type of office culture. Our culture correspondent Song Yujin reports on what that is. It's a typical workday on Jeju Island. Inside the seven-story building in Jeju City, Kim Song Uk is busy at work. Kim works for the Jeju provincial government, but today, instead of heading to the government complex, he's here at a second office. So this is the Sotong Center or Communication Center in Jeju City. So here, people can read books and try out a wide range of cultural activities like carpentry and cooking. But for some, this is another office. 
Kim is among the more than 60 participants in the Jeju Special Self-Governing Provinces, another office project. In March, Jeju became the first local government in Korea to launch this initiative. The office environment has a profound impact on human behavior, cognition, and psychology. Yet, the public sector tends to be rigid, making it challenging to foster cognitive flexibility and creativity. So we started exploring alternative office spaces outside. Currently, there are 13 of these offices across the island, eight in Jeju City and five in Seokipo City. About 800 level six or below Jeju government employees are eligible to apply. They just have to select a date and location and sign up a week before. For them, it's an opportunity to enhance their work efficiency, which is why Kim Sung-wook has already used the program three times. Tasks like documenting last year's work require my full attention. In the office, I sometimes spend the whole day on something that could be done in one or two hours. Especially when my boss calls, I help out colleagues or receive multiple phone calls. So I saw another office as the perfect solution for staying focused. Communicating with my colleagues is not a problem as I can do so via phone, video calls, and online messaging. For the government, there is no financial burden as all of these offices are public or government-owned buildings. While Jeju is the only region that has adopted this system so far, this reflects a growing trend in Korea's workplace culture. After COVID, many companies have adopted remote working or working outside traditional office settings. Local governments, particularly outside the major cities, see this trend as a way to attract talent and boost their economies. Throughout the year, Jeju plans to open up more workspaces and expand participation so that more people can have their own another office. Song Yujin, Arirang News, Jeju. With cherry blossoms officially blooming in Seoul yesterday, the colors of spring are coming out. Highs in Seoul exceeded 22 degrees Celsius today, showing the warmest weather this spring. It is higher than at the same time last year. Even though clear spring weather was seen throughout the day today, there is rain forecast for most parts of the country tomorrow. This rain will be concentrated on Jeju Island and the south coast. More than 150 millimeters of heavy rain is expected in the mountainous areas of Jeju Island and up to 80 millimeters over the south coast. Caution is necessary as heavy rain of up to 30 millimeters per hour will fall on these areas with gusts of wind and lightning from tonight. The rain will mostly stop around tomorrow evening. A warm morning is expected throughout the country tomorrow. Seoul and Daegu will start off at 12 degrees. Daily highs will move up to 20 in Seoul, Gwangju 17 degrees Celsius. Warm spring weather with temperature swings will be seen for the rest of the week. That's all for Korea. Here are the weather conditions around the world. Well, that is all for this newscast. Thank you for watching. We'll be back at 10 p.m. with the AI headline news. Good night.